Is this, the LEGO NES, the perfect LEGO set? Let's find out. First, let me define my definition of what the perfect LEGO set would be. The perfect LEGO set must check off four characteristics. First, it's gonna be the overall look and design. Let's say, display factor. Second, it's gonna be the overall building experience. Was there much frustration? Were the instructions clear and defined? Was it maybe too easy to build? Maybe it was just too difficult. Number three, is there playability to the set? Some sets are just meant for the display factor, but I think in order to have the perfect LEGO set, you must have some sort of playability where you can come back and enjoy it. And finally, number four, it's cost. Is the overall look and design, the building experience, and the playability factor of the set, is that worth the cost they're charging? And if a set checks off all four of those characteristics, I deem that the perfect LEGO set. To give an example that checked off all four of those as far as great cost, great playability factor, great display piece, and overall great build was the LEGO Saturn V rocket that was released in 2017. So that's kind of like where I set my benchmark as perfect. So let's go ahead and get started on the overall look and design of the LEGO NES set. And I believe that look and design are very important because that initially is what attracts you to the set and makes you want to purchase it. And I believe this nails that. Now this set has two outstanding features when you just look at overall look and design of this. First thing I'm drawn to was the retro TV set with the scrolling screen. Second, then my eye was drawn to the actual console itself and how greatly they did as far as replicating the NES console. They nailed that perfectly. So let's take a little bit more focus on the overall look and design of the retro TV. They include an antenna. Now the antenna to me, this looks more like a radio antenna on a car or maybe a stereo from back in the day. Not so much the rabbit ears that you would see on a retro TV set, but hey, I'm glad they included this in the first place. Another thing, look at the design. The actual color, size of the display, buttons here on the side, perfect. I had a 1980s TV when I was growing up in the 90s and I still remember the clicking to change the channel. Just It was just hefty click, and they've replicated that perfectly, so great design there. Heading over to the console. Now you have it where you can flip up the lid and insert a cartridge. Clicks down, flip it up, perfect. It replicates the experience straight from the 1980s. Now one thing I think they missed out on as far as design was actually just kind of skipping over the controller and not putting where these buttons where you could click. If they did that, that would set this overall design above the moon. When you're a gamer, you really interact mostly with the controller. They missed that opportunity there just to make it that much better. Now there's an Easter egg here when I was building it that I didn't realize was there. Just turn the console over here, lift up the portion, and there you go. You have World 1 and 2 and the warp zone where you could jump worlds when you're playing Super Mario. Nice little Easter egg. Great job for the creators to include that. Nice attention to detail. Let's go and put that back. All right, so let's talk about the overall build experience. Now, the overall building experience was without hiccups or real frustrations. The instructions are laid out in two booklets. The first booklet, you're building the console, the controller, and the game pack. And the second one, you're building the retro TV. It takes about an average, I would say, depending on your experience level, five to six hours to complete the set. Let's go ahead and roll some of the highlights of that build. Roll it. Now let's talk about the overall playability factor, which I believe this shines. 
First off, what we've already stated before, we have the scrolling screen, where you can go ahead and replicate playing the Super Mario Brothers from 1985. Opening up the console and being able to insert a cartridge, highlighting the experience of actually putting it in, maybe even blowing it, <laughs> inserting that, clicking that down. But I guess after a while, I guess that could become quite boring, but I think they solved that with one caveat. It is something that you have to buy additionally, this. Lego Super Mario from the Starter Course. If you have him and you've purchased that set, you could truly unlock the magic of this set. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go and turn on Super Mario. Perfect. And at the top of the television, you have a four x 10 plate, and all you have to do is just press down in the front. The plate gets removed quite easily. You move it off. Once you remove that, that exposes the interactive tile. And all you do is scan Super Mario to that tile, which basically puts him into NES console mode, where he's gonna interact with the TV. And how does he do that? Well, if you look above here, there's a little spot where you would put him, and when you spin the crank, you start seeing these colored tiles. Those colored tiles tell him what to play and how to interact with what's going on with the screen. Let me go ahead and show you. Right? All right, guys, there you have it. Absolutely, woohoo, that's exactly how I feel about this. They did a great job. That gives this set so much more playability. I've done that for hours this week, showing off people, like, hey guys, you have to see this. Look how this interacts, and every single time I show it to somebody, it blows them away. Including Super Mario really does make this set amazing. However, that brings us to number four, which is cost. And I believe that's the Achilles heel of this set. So this set retails in the US for $230 or $229.99 if you want to be precise. And for that you get 2,646 pieces, which comes out to about 8.7 cents per piece. That's conservative, it's not a bad price. However, if you figure in that you have to buy the starter course and include Mario to really activate all the features of the set, that's seven additional pieces to include Mario and an additional $60 for the actual starter course which brings this set to $290 or $289.98, which brings the per piece cost to 10.7 cents per piece, which is more than the Millennium Falcon, which is at 10.6 cents per piece at $800. Is the set worth that price? And because of that, because it is more expensive per piece than the Millennium Falcon, I have to say no. So it absolutely nails design, building experience, great. Number three, playability. This is where the set shines as long as you have Super Mario, but cost, is dismal, that's where it fails. And because of that, the Lego Nintendo Entertainment System is not the perfect set in my eyes. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think this is the benchmark for Lego sets going forward? Let me know in the comments below. Remember guys, if you want more content like this, go ahead and like this video, share this video as much as you can. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys later.